everyone, Vince Stone, back for another Interfacing Linux, and this week, I present to you a cautionary tale about doing extensive research only to get kicked squarely in my pinky toe. Nasty business, that. But, this story has something of a happy ending. It all started when I came across this posting on Reverb.com for a DigiDesign 003R for $65. That is $1,229 off the listed price in 2007. And like most of you, I wanted to see what a $1,200 interface sounded like. So I added to Google. I found out that work had started on a driver back in 2011. In 2013, an also driver showed up. And in 2015, the DigiOOX support landed in the Linux kernel. Good to go, right? Right? Well, let's get this critter unpacked. And since it came from the original owner, I have everything, including a warranty card, the promotional bits, and the tiny little feats that go on the bottom. Look at it. There it is installed. All 11.22 pounds of it. That's five kilos for the rest of the world. The Digi 003R installed in my rack where it will stay because that took a long time to get in there. All two years of it. It's a monster. It's also a nice shelf, if I'm being perfectly honest. But before we start it up, I do feel the need to issue a little bit of a trigger warning because anyone who's miswired an electronic device and has accidentally released some of that magic smoke, well, you might want to avoid this next part. But here we go. Take a listen. Yes, it's supposed to do that. Thanks, Satan. Here it is, the boat anchor itself. DigiDesign 003 Yar R. Lots of things to play with on the front of this. Input 1, input 2, input 3, input 4. Not your preamps, but you do get the uh, direct input, mic switches, high pass filters. It's all there. And not one, but two phones. Good on that. Good on that. You have your host light, your 8 at sync, world clock, spitf, and you know, your typical MIDI in, MIDI out. Mute buttons for the phones, um, which you get two of, and that's good. Aux switches and two headphone jacks. On the back of this monster, you have your one, two, three, and four mic inputs, followed by direct inputs, 48 volt banked. One, two, three, and four. That's pretty nice. And if you just want to go line in, you have four of those as well. Four, five, six, seven, and eight with a minus 10 or plus four pad. That's always good to see. Foot switch, um, eight general purpose outputs. There's your fire wire in and out. You can do pass through. Good on that. Eight at in and out. World clock, you have your spit off as well aux alt main midi that's pretty neat one in two out do a bit of pass through with that if that is your thing and just a standard internal power supply that's good to see no brick neat okay just get it plugged in to your firewire port select the also driver and select the device in the drop down menu you should see d003 rack your sample rate two options 44 one or 48, that's all it works with currently, and 256 and 512 for your buffer size. And being firewired, periods and buffer, keep that at three. Everything else, bog standard. Let's click OK, start it up. And we should be good, but let's take a look at Katia. There it is. We have 18 in, 18 out, and our MIDI is showing up correctly. Good to go. It's the pops and the clicks. Oh no, there it is. That, we got it. We got it. There's a good example of it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is the fatal flaw with the Digi 003. Um, it makes me very sad, but unfortunately, it makes the device completely, wholly and utterly useless. There it is again for recording.
Well, there we have it. Everything I could think to test on. Well, anything, everything I could test on the Digi 003 dog. I'm sure I missed something. Let me know in the comments. But if we have to put a bow on it, what little bow we can. For the good, it can absolutely 100% positively be used for practicing deadlifts. That's really the only use you're going to get out of this device uh, right now in 2020. The negatives, even if it did work, everything was working perfectly, it only connects at 44.1 and 48K with a minimum buffer size of 256. Then, then we have the big killer. What you heard, the pops and the clicks. There's nothing you can do about it right now. But that's, that's really the down part because unfortunately that last one, the pops and the clicks, makes it completely useless as a recording interface. So on our handy color-coded scale of lawn chairs, the Digi 003R gets a hard red. That's not good. That's kind of bad. Really, that's, that's as bad as you can get. But, but, Remember how I said this story has a happy ending of sorts? Did I say of sorts at the beginning? Pretend I did. Because I tracked down the maintainer of the project and asked if he was familiar with this popping and clicking issue that basically made the unit unusable. Turns out, he was. And he said, In this year, I'll tackle this issue. However, I've had no idea how to achieve the clock recovery for the engine yet. And the open issue on GitHub has been marked as a bug and attracted the attention of Zam Audio, the fantastic guy who originally reverse engineered the protocol. So who knows? We might, just might, get a working driver after all. Eventually. But until then, what should you pay for Digi 003R in 2020? Hmm. Well, if, big if, big neon light blink tag if, the driver issue gets sorted this year, and you don't plan on sampling higher than 48K with that 256 buffer, and you can deal with those looks, that's, it's an acquired taste, or maybe if you just need a nice shelf in your rack, maybe $100. Maybe, but I couldn't couldn't recommend doing that because next week, oh, it's a tease part. We're looking at an interface that has more features, sounds better, even has an internal mixer that's fully functional under Linux. It's the first time I've had a chance to play around with features like that. And if you're watching this on YouTube, that episode, it's already available for patrons. And speaking of... We get to do that thing. Mm. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, if you're curious about what new interfaces or vintage interfaces, if you can count 10, 15 year old pieces of electronics, you can now. Let's just call it vintage. Uh, what I'm looking at in the future, we have a list on Amazon for some of the new stuff that I will be picking up. There's a link in the description. And if you have anything at home, you have old, unloved interfaces in your rack, in your closet, under your bed, feel free to send them my way um, to Vin's Interface Rescue. Catalog them, test them, get some benchmarks, and hopefully simplify this just that little bit for everyone else out there looking to get started in music, audio production under Linux. That link will be in the description, along with everything else. All right. I will see you next week um, with something that, if you zoom in, you might be able to figure out what it is. All right. Remember, friends don't let friends. Use audio interfaces as sound cards. Mm -hmm.